Year 3, English Lesson 7, Otterline and the Yellow Cat. Word of the week is inability. The definition is not being able to do something. An example is her inability to read made learning difficult. Please write down the definition and this example sentence for later use. Let's read chapter five. Chapter five. Mr. Monroe climbed up the fire escape, which led to the roof of the pet pot building. Every so often he paused and listened at the windows. Mr. Monroe liked listening to the interesting conversations that went on in the other apartments, but he didn't tell Otterline as he knew she wouldn't approve. No bananas to be had anywhere. Then Cecil slipped in the shower of all the bad luck. Has anyone seen Fifi? And then Mrs. Passanat Monkey ran away to see. Mum, Mum, I can't find my grey shirt. Mum, ouch, ouch. Mr. Monroe stood on the roof of the Pepper Pot building and thought for a long time. It began to rain very heavily. As he stood in the rain, Mr. Monroe thought about the cold, wet bog in Norway. He remembered how Otterline's parents, Professor and Professor Brown, had found him and had invited him to come home with them to the Pepper Pot building. Professor Brown lent him his nice new raincoat and Professor Brown gave him her sunglasses. The three of them sailed home on the SS Trondheim. To avoid unwanted attention, they called him Mr. Monroe, although his real name was something in Norwegian that meant small, hairy bog person. From the moment she was born, Otterline and Mr Monroe were inseparable. He took her for long walks. He let her brush his hair. He even let her give him a bath, but only once. But whatever they did, Otterline's parents knew that as long as Mr Monroe was with her, their daughter would be safe. Lots and lots of turnips, in fact too many. And Mr. Priestley is growing another moustache. So Mrs. Patternack now has a parrot. Fifi, Fifi, Fifi. Mum, Mum. The rain stopped and Mr. Monroe went down the fire escape. He didn't feel sad any longer. He stood on the doormat until he had stopped dripping. It felt good to be out of the rain. It felt good to be far away from the bog in Norway. It felt good to be living in the pepper pot building. Most of all, it felt good to have Otterline as his best friend. Mr Monroe found Otterline sitting in the Bedemere rocking chair. Otterline was making notes in her notebook. Mr Monroe knew how relaxing Otterline found brushing his hair, especially after a busy day. Would you like me to brush your hair? asked Otterline. Mr Monroe nodded. When she had finished, Otterline looked at Mr Monroe for a long time. Then she looked at her notebook. I've got a clever plan, she said. How is Mr Monroe feeling at the end of chapter five? Make some notes and don't forget to use evidence to say why he is feeling that way. As I continue to read the story, I'd like you to think about these two questions. What might the clever plan be? And who is the new lapdog? Late that night, there was a knock on the door of the old warehouse. Go away, yelled the yellow cat. We're closed. Call us by appointment only. There was another knock on the door, followed by a rather feeble bark. All right, all right, complained the yellow cat. Keep your tail on. I'm coming. I'm coming. The yellow cat opened the door. There was a small hairy dog outside. The small hairy dog handed the yellow cat a card. Bimpy Bottlenose the Second, Emperor of Heligoland. Pedigree, Norwegian lapdog. Lapdog, eh? said the yellow cat. Then you've come to the right place. She stepped aside and let him in. Look what the cat dragged in, said the yellow cat. 
Boys, meet Bimpy Bottlenose the Second, Emperor of Heligoland. The poker players looked up from their game. We can call him Nosy, said the yellow cat. Nosy, meet the gang. Rupe the Fang, Snarler McMcTur, Butch Hilberg, and the Sundance Pup. The gang wagged their tails and made room for Nosy at the table. Clive, said the yellow cat. Make sure the boys don't stay up too late. We've got work tomorrow. You're the boss, boss, squawked the cockatoo. So where are you from, stranger, said Rupe the Fang. Nosy gave him his card. Rupe looked at it. Norway, he said. It can get very wet in Norway. Nosy nodded and put the playing card on the table. Emperor of Heligoland, said Butch Hilberg, chewing on his doggy treat. I once saw the Emperor of Heligoland wore a splendid hat. Nosy nodded and played another card. Care for a doggy treat, offered Mac McTurg. Nosy shook his head. Don't say much, do you? Mac McTurg snarled. What's wrong? Cat got your tongue? Don't mind him, said the Sundance pup. He's just sore because his last owner took him to the poodle parlour for a shampoo. Nosy laid his playing cards on the table. Full house, squawked Clive. You win, type of bed. Nosy didn't sleep well in the lapdog's basket. Rupe the Fang snored, Snarla McMcTurr whimpered, Butch Hilberg chased squirrels in his dreams, and the Sundance pup had terrible wind. He was just beginning to doze off when the door opened and the yellow cat crept in. The yellow cat opened her bag and took out an emerald necklace, which she carefully hid beneath the floorboards. Just then the telephone rang. The yellow cat leapt into the air with a surprise and Clive woke up with a squawk. Don't just perch there, hissed the yellow cat. Answer it. Clive picked up the receiver. The lapdog agency, how may we help you? He said. A lapdog? Certainly, madame. We have an excellent selection. Would you care to make an appointment this morning? Yes, I think we can fit you in. What time? Now? Well, I suppose. Let me see. Just then there was a knock at the door. Must I do everything myself, said the yellow cat, slinking up the stairs. The yellow cat opened the door and an extremely large lady was standing on the doorstep. Can I help you, said yellow cat. Mrs Ursula Johnson Smith, said the large lady grandly. I'm incredibly rich, but lonely old lady and I'd like a lapdog to take home with me. I've just made an appointment. Clive put down the telephone. Please come in, Mrs. Jansen Smith, purred the yellow cat. You can call me Ursula, said the lady. This is Mrs. Ursula Jansen Smith. Take a close look at what she is wearing. Does it look familiar? A lampshade, sunglasses, a long scarf, a fur coat and some gloves. Can you find clues to answer these questions? What is the yellow cat really doing? And who is Mrs. Jansen Smith? Well, well, today, 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 please remember to email your answers to me and I can give you some dojos. And do remember to stay at home and stay alert. See you soon.